Hey, Campus Georgia, back in the man cave. Woo! Who would have thought, right? 2022. I hope everybody had a safe new year. And it's going to be a spring difference one. So over the holidays and everything, kind of busy getting things done, preparing for stuff to come up, had ordered something. <laughs> yeah, I know, shopping again. Sharp and shiny, what can I tell you? Anyway, I had ordered something uh, on Amazon that came across another sentimental buy. Um, as you remember last time, I bought a Biltong knife, which was uh, the only reason I bought it was because it was called the Biltong and it brought back some memories of back home growing up. Well, did it again. This time, I bought a kudu. No, 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 not this. This. And it's a knife from Cold Steel and it's called the kudu. And here it is here. In the box, you can see it's a nice box it comes in. And uh, you can see the Cold Steel on there and it says Kudu Light. Interesting knife. Obviously named after a, a, a familiar animal for me, a kudu. Um, beautiful animals, as you saw in the picture. Huge, giant buck. And uh, make for good hunting and eating. And a lot of other things. It was very popular back in the day. Uh, actually, makes the best biltong. <laughs> uh, cold steel kudu. And as you can see, it's a folder. Uh, interesting knife, a little bit bigger than I'm used to. Once again, it's it's a little bit bigger. It looks nice. One thing I will say right off the bat, I noticed very light. I thought it would be a lot heavier. And let's just open this sucker up quickly. And there you can see it there. And you can see on the blade, it says, you can see me in the background. It does say kudu. And on the other side of the blade, it says Kudu 5CR 15 MOV stainless steel and yep made in China what can I say we're used to that now it's just a given to give you a little bit of background on this knife um, the Kudu originally was made by a company in South Africa called Okapi Knives and they made a lot of knives similar to this the difference was they had wood handles. This is not a wood handle, obviously. You can see there. Um, has, it has a nice look to it. It's got a nice pattern on it. And uh, looks nice, looks well built. Um, personally, I prefer a wood handle. I looked, I couldn't find one under cold steel. Once I ordered this, I did a little bit more research and came across a copy knives. Uh, had a look at their website. And on their website, they had wood handles, as you can see here, on their knives. Uh, much better, I would assume. For me, I liken a traditional wood handle. But let's have a closer look at it. Like I said, it is a folder. thing I'm not really keen on is it doesn't have a lock on it when you open it. And when you open it, you can see it goes to 90 degrees here. From there to a 90, and then clips in pretty pretty solid you heard the clip there um, to give you the blade out there you know it it still comes undone you, there's no release to it it's spring held looking at the knife when i looked at it online and i i looked at some of the other ones and they on the top here they have a finger ring or an a steel ring on it kind of like a keychain type ring not sure what it's for maybe just for hanging on your belt uh, some people will put their finger through it when they open it. But you can see the shape of the knife. You can see the stainless steel blade like top here. This is the, the spring on it. And if you watch, it lifts up. Um, familiar, not an unusual way of doing a knife. It all depends on how strong the spring is. Will it stay that way over time? Will it get weaker? I'm not sure. Let's look at the, the specs here. The blade, like I said, is stainless steel. It has that clip point, and it's a fairly long, deep clip point. Um, the blade comes up to a nice point. It does have the, the nail latch, I should say, uh, to pull the blade out. 
and they have the labels on this on the blade the blade is four and a half inches long i believe the blade thickness and you can see it there is about two mil i'm still trying to get used to how light this thing is i'm shocked the overall length is just over 10 inches with the handle open so you have a four and a half inch blade and then the handle is about five and three quarter inches pretty big it sits in my hand pretty well and you can see here it sticks out of, out of here which surprises me because of my uh, short stubby grubbies that i have which is no finger and all palm there is a lot sticking out here so if you have big hands you're going to have no problem handling this thing um, bigger than i thought it would be 10 and a half inches is not something i'd normally carry in my pocket uh, as you know everybody has their own personal use for a knife the reason they purchase the knife and how they use them and what they use them for differs from person to person for me typically i'll buy a knife for work um, it's not something that i use a lot i use it to cut open boxes bags that sort of thing maybe trim some tubing and things like that so i don't need a knife that's this big and you know a lot of other people actually want it as uh, a self-defense and edc that they'd have in their pocket interestingly enough on when i was online i read an article from south africa and uh, they say that knives have become the most popular we weapon above guns which surprised me um, actually no it doesn't um, the the cost of of everything in south africa is pretty high here this is a a lot inexpensive way to carry a weapon on you and you know like i said it's it's not a small blade how sharp it is this doesn't very and that's kind of disappointing it doesn't feel that sharp uh, it cuts it cuts the paper but it just you know it doesn't have that clean cut to it the surprising me from cold steel and like i said it is a copy from a copy knives in south africa and if i'd known that <laughs> sooner i would probably have bought a more traditional wood handled one from a copy knives but i have this guy basically the same thing the main difference the handle it's wood from them and, and like i showed you it's a wood handle and interesting enough they have a couple of different knives and they have a biltong knife <laughs> this guy so once again, if I'd known that, it's more traditional from back home, we might even get one of those to have a look at and maybe compare it to the other Bultong that I have from Antonini Knives. And here's a link to the video. Back to the knife. The handle is five and three quarter inches, like I told you, and it's made from, what do they call it? The ZY-EX material, which is kind of a plastic material and they gave it kind of a wood grainy look. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's okay. I, I don't have a problem with the handle. I just traditionally prefer to have a wood handle. I just more old school. Um, but nothing wrong with this. Seems to work fine. The handle is put together. The skin's held together and it looks like uh, by screws. So you can take it apart. If you have a look at the handle, it's solid on the back and it's got a slit in it. So they don't come apart. You just take the handle out and slide it out. There's not two pieces on the handle. This piece here obviously holds it, uh, gives it a little bit of strength there, which helps the spring. As you know, I'm a big fan of a lock. The way they got around this, and this is not an unusual way of doing uh, a folding knife. There are a lot out there that don't have a lock and just have that back spring holding it there the nice thing they did do was they put that 90 on which is a finger saver if you do this and you go to close it it'll stop at 90 first allow you to readjust and close safely so they did think of that obviously they knew that if it just clips down and there's a good chance you're going to get your fingers in it so a uh, good idea there uh, surprisingly for the size of the knife uh, is a lot lighter than i expected it's not a bad knife um, like I said, I'd rather have gone to the original guys or copy knives, but Cold Steel, I do own a couple of their stuff and I have, and it has not disappointed. They've been really reliable. I have the Trail Boss from Cold Steel, the, my axe that I 
can fit on my pack. It's not a full size axe, a little bit smaller, and it's more of a camp axe than a felling axe. It's uh, really handy and I love it. It works great. And, and they make this. Basically, what they did was they copied the kudu from a copy. And I believe they've copied a, other, a couple of other ones. I haven't really looked at it. But uh, this one caught my attention. Like I said, this was a sentimental buy, the kudu. Uh, names like that catch my attention. And of course, it's shiny and kind of sharp. What can I say? Price certainly met my budget. I paid a whopping $7.64 for it. Not bad for the price. It's pretty good value, I would say. If you're looking for an inexpensive C uh, EDC in your pocket that you're going to abuse over time and that, and you wanted a bit of size to it, like I said, it's fairly light. So in your pocket, not a bad thing. I think overall, it's uh, certainly for the price, probably well worth it. You could buy a couple of them, and as you go through them, just replace them. It's that inexpensive. What you would use it for, like I said, is a personal preference. Is it an EDC for me? Is this my kind of knife? Not really. I prefer a smaller one. If I'm looking for some sort of protection or general camp use outdoors, I'm going to go with a belt knife. When they're getting this big, and like I said, 10 inches, I'm, I'm thinking a belt knife. <laughs> I mean, I always carry the small... Uh, uh, Antonini or my uh, other small uh, knife that I can just carry in my pocket and I've got a ton of them as you know the Opinol uh, number eight is probably the one I carry the most at work uh, I've abused it terribly but it still works just fine and it's holding up great I can't complain about that the Kudu light from cold steel stainless steel blade made in China Hence the price, I suspect. <laughs> I think it's time to go play. It's a wee chilly outside, but let's go out and just play with it and see what we can do with it. Not sure uh, what I would use it for. But like I said, it's a sentimental buy for me. We'll have to give it a try. After all, I did buy it for some reason. Let's go make some fire in the snow. It is cold outside, and if I'm going to go outside and play with this, I'd like to be kind of warm. <laughs> Let's go. So as you can see, we're outside, and I brought some stuff with me. I brought my doodle stick. Probably use the knife just to uh, make some cuts and see how it works. Uh, my uh, backup fire starter kit, steel, PS10, folding saw, and cut some wood. And then I got the kudu. And hopefully... I'm a little concerned about the sharpness. Uh, we'll see what we can do with it. So let's make some fire. Okay, the first thing I noticed was I was going to use a ferrocium rod uh, to start the fire and try using the back of the blade to strike. Well, it's not a sharp 90 at all. It won't even strike the thing. So, for me, not a good thing. I think my steel will strike. So we're getting spark out of that. Let's try start a fire. It's kind of chilly and windy. So we got a fire going, a little bit hotter than I thought it would be. Uh, the wind picked up and it's got really cold. <laughs> oh well, back to the knife. At least we can burn some wood, which I need to do because we had a big storm the other day and all these branches fell down in the yard. And as you can see, I piled up all the small stuff. I've got to get rid of it. So looking at the knife, 
uh, as you saw, the spine of the knife doesn't have a good 90. So using a ferrous CM rod with this is not going to work unless you want to clean it up yourself. And then you'll have a nice fine edge on it and you'll be able to strike a ferrous CM rod. One thing I did notice is I put this in my pocket while I walked out back here and hardly noticed it which surprised me with the size but certainly the weight not bad so wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it and typically what I use knives like this for is playing I like to whittle I like to whittle a piece of wood I'll find a, a branch somewhere and uh, whittle away on the branch and see what I could come up with then I thought I'd find a decent one and keep it and just try different things with it and uh, see what I can come up with for different staff designs and things like that so as you can see I've been playing here I did this with my uh, bushcraft knife my uh, BPS knives bushcraft and it worked really well this uh, the sharpness of this I was disappointed uh, of how it came not very sharp I tried uh, I started making a notch here and I'm, as you can see I, I really it doesn't cut as clean as I'd like it to it needs to be sharpened a little bit more if you're any good at sharpening you'll be able to improve this I am terrible that's why I bought myself a workshop system a couple of swipes on that should take care of the uh, the sharpness of this blade so but I wanted to see how it felt in my hand like I said it's a little bit big I don't really like that long a knife when I'm doing this um, I don't feel I have the control but it, it it works and what I'm doing here is I'm just going to cut a ring around here and the plan is to cut a ring there cut a ring there and leave the round piece in the middle here and then Woodle away underneath so that I have just a almost like a, a wrist bangle hanging on on here loose on itself made out of the one piece of wood that's the plan I need to mark this around so I can work my way around and it marks it fine just not as sharp as I was hoping and my fire is kind of dying I just got to touch it up quickly After all, I have a lot of wood I've got to burn. I want to practice things on my doodle stick. And uh, I thought, why not give this a try to see how it does. It's, uh, it's okay. But like I said, if you look at the part I'm using on the knife, I'm way down the blade here, what I'm cutting with because I have more control using my thumb on the back of the spine and the blade's a little long for this so what do you do it is a heavy duty knife and it will do probably a lot of the tasks you want it to do but hey it's a kudu cold steel not bad for the price like I said I paid that much I'm going to nurse the fire here. You all take care this year and hopefully it's a good one for you. Pretty sure I'll be back with something else. Maybe sharp and shiny. I am going on an ice fishing trip up north. It is our annual one. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again soon. Maybe back from the trip, I'll burn the rest of my wood. Maybe let's make a meal. See what we can come up with. Hopefully not too much snow. <laughs> Just saying. You all be safe out there. Thanks for watching.